So hello, today we are going to discuss about human eye and the principle how the rod cells enact during the night and low light conditions. So let's first talk about talk about the structure of the eye. So the eye involves mainly three parts. One is the uh, the layer surrounding the eyeball and another is the lens and other accessory stuffs included in our eye. So let's first we know that we have three layers. One is sclera, choroid and retina in our eyeball and we also have a lens. So the hair, the lens is denoted by the blue color. So the blue color denotes the lens and the lens works as a focusing of the light onto the surface of the retina. So we have our outer layer, the outermost layer of the eyeball is the sclera. So it is repre represented by the transparent color and we also have choroid denoted by the green color and we also have retina denoted by this pink color. So this choroid is denoted by the green color and the retina by pink color and we sclera have no color. So it is for the denotion in, in an easy manner. And we also have optic nerves leaving the eye. So this optic nerve leaves the eye and at this point no vision occurs. So the optic nerve and in the front part of the eye there is a bulging structure which is known as cornea. So what we see from the front uh, for normal human that is the cornea. And above the cornea there is a thin layer thin uh, tissue which is known as conjunctiva which is uh, denoted by this orange color in the diagram. So now we have the ciliary bodies. So the ciliary body um, consists of a bulging part known as the iris. So this iris denotes the color of the pupil. So our pupil is the curvature. So this curvature surrounding the iris is the pupil and the color of the pupil depends upon so this color of this pupil depends upon the iris so iris is responsible for the color and the ciliary body also projects out with some ligaments uh, fibers which holds the lens and helps in its contraction and relaxation to focus the light on the retina so now we ha also have uh, the layers one above the other and now the accessory parts not accessory but all are helpful and we have these two sections divided in our eye one is the vitreous chamber and another one is aqueous chamber so the vitreous chamber uh, contains vitreous humor it is a transparent semi-solid fluid and helps in the support of the eyeball and there is also another chamber that is aqueous chamber which contains aqueous humor. So the aqueous humor is a thin watery fluid and it gets refueled or being drained by the duct of sclame. It is denoted by that yellow spot. So the ciliary body secretes, so the ciliary body secretes this aqueous humor and it is uh, drained by the duct of, duct of sclame into the veins. And now let's talk about the uh, uh, the associated or other associated things in our eye. So this whole structure, in we have some fine fine departments where there is no visual activity occurring. I have also told that in the beginning that blind spot. I have not mentioned the name, but I also already told that there is no vision occurring in the optic nerve place, and we also have a place. Uh, a, a, a groove that is known as fovea centralis also known as yellow spot so here there is the highest amount of resolution and densely packed by cone cells so in this area there is high amount of resolution so now we have drawn the whole figure in the whole layers of the eye in a stack like manner just like it present in the eye so we have drawn the layers, the sclera, choroid and the retina one above the other just like it is present inside the eye. So the sclera is the bottom layer, above it is choroid and above that is the retina as, the, as it is present inside our eye. So 
the retina is divided into two portions so the retina is divided into two portions that is the one is the visual portion and another is the non-visual portion so the non-visual portion contains the pigmented layer which contains melanin pigment so melanin pigments are present which gives the pigmented layer a black color and the pigmented layer helps in the scattering of stray lights and absorption of some scattering lights and the visual portion contains three cells the photoreceptor cell the bipolar cell and ganglionic cell so and living with the optic nerve and this optic nerve lives from the ganglionic cell as a bunch of optic fibers and this pigmented layer which is a non-visual portion because it is not participating in any visual activity and it contains melanin and gives a black color appearance but in case of albinos uh, the albinos doesn't contain melanin in this portion also so the melanin is absent in pigmented layer in case of albinos and this layer and this uh, pigmented layer is present all over the ciliary body means that it is present up to the ciliary body here this point and over all over the choroid so this uh, non-visual portion is present all over the choroid and the ciliary body up to this point and the visual portion and the visual portion is also known as neural portion because it is having all the cells responsible for the visual activity and this layer has its territory so this layer has small amount of territory compared to the non-visual portion because it terminates just before the ciliary body at this point so that point where it ends is known as ora serrata so the termin so the visual portion terminates just before the ciliary body huh? and this portion so this portion is known as the terminating point known as ora serrata now let's talk about the rod rod cell so rod cells are responsible for our vision in low light so this rod cells helps to see us in night and low light conditions and this low light vision is known as cotopic vision so here is a rough diagram of a rod cell containing uh, the rhodopsin in its membrane so the plasma membrane of rhodopsin contains rhodopsin pigment which is a protein and this rhodopsin pigment present on the plasma membrane of rod cell is purplish red so this color of this pigment is purple red and and when rhodopsin breaks so when rhodopsin breaks it breaks into two compounds so rhodopsin gives opsin and retinal on breakdown so opsin is a protein and retinal is a aldehyde of vitamin a which is orange in color so this retinal is orange in color and now just go to the mechanism of vision at low light so vision at low light that is the night condition when rod cells are active and helps us to see clearly in night so i have already prepared these steps to save some time and these steps i want to discuss so the first step is that when so when light falls so when when light falls on the pigment of the rhodopsin so this rhodopsin breaks into opsin and retinal it is retinal which is an aldehyde of vitamin a so when light falls on this cell so there is rhodopsin present so this rhodopsin breaks into two components that is opsin opsin and retinal okay so i have already discussed the breakdown of rhodopsin and its dissociation so when the dissociation of rhodopsin occurs into opsin and retinal then it causes a change in structure of the opsin so the opsin changes its structure after the dissociation and this change in structure of opsin causes change in permeability so there is a change in permeability of the cell membrane so the permeability of the cell membrane changes that is the amount of permeable the cell membrane is it got changed and due to this 
change in permeability of the cell membrane so there is a change in permeability which causes to generate a impulse so this change in permeability of the cell causes a impulse to generate so this impulse is carried by the optic nerve to the brain and this impulse travels how i'm going to show it right now so the impulse after the dissociation and the opsin changes the structure and the dissociation happens for the rods and both the cone cells is happen i will discuss the cones in later but what happens is that the impulse generated due to the breakdown and change structure of opsin so this opsin changes its structure and generates some impulse due to the change in permeability of the cell as this impulse travels through this bipolar cell then to the ganglionic cell and ultimately it leaves through the optic nerve so this optic nerve reaches the brain and this optic nerve is a second cranial nerve so this optic nerve leaves the cell and goes to the brain and the brain here analyzes so the brain analyzes the image and recognizes it from its old memory so the brain recognizes it from its old memory so if we recap recap the whole process from the beginning so in brief what we have learned is that when light falls on the rhodopsin pigment present on the cell membrane of the rod cells then the rhodopsin breaks into opsin and retinal so this retinal is a aldehyde of vitamin a and the breakdown causes a change in structure of the opsin so this breakdown of rhodopsin causes a change in structure of opsin which causes a change in the permeability of the cell membrane of the rod cell and this change in permeability gener generates an impulse so a uh, impulse is generated and this impulse travels to the optic nerve to the brain and brain analyze this image and from the old memory it recognizes the thing that is happening in front of it in the form of a visual reflex so this vision is generated and we see the object near us so this is how the brain works and uh, in our next video we will talk about the so the next video will be about the cones so this would be a long video if i talk about the cones so i've divided it and i'll discuss the mechanism of cone in our next video so stay connected till the next video get uploaded about the mechanisms of cone cells and thank you for watching subscribe my channel stay healthy bye